today we are going to take some notes on a couple of new terms for you, spontaneity and entropy. Before we get into uh, these new terms, just a quick review of some old terms from Thermo 1 from first semester, because uh, you'll hear these terms again. When you hear the term system, they're talking about the part of the universe that's under study, so the particular reaction you might be looking at, that kind of a thing. Uh, the surroundings are all the rest of the universe. When you hear the term state function, it's a quantity whose value depends only on the initial and final states of the system. So if you think back to your physics days, we'll do a couple physics examples today. Uh, displacement would be a state function because it only depends on your initial and final uh, locations where distance would not be a state function. When you hear the term standard state conditions, the conditions that they're talking about are 298 Kelvin, which is roughly room temperature, and one bar's worth of pressure, which is pretty close to one atmosphere's worth of pressure, also normal atmospheric conditions. Uh, and then standard enthalpy of formation is the enthalpy change that occurs when a compound is formed from its elements in their standard states. So oxygen in its standard state room temperature is a gas or iron in its at room temperature it, got, it would be a solid, right? So it's, it's the typical uh, states of matter for that particular substance. And then a little reminder that enthalpy of formation for all elements is zero because if your enthalpy of formation is the energy change that occurs when a compound is formed, if you're an element, you're not making a compound, right? So your value would be zero. Uh, you're going to hear this new term thrown around a little bit. So just uh, just in case you hear this, you'll see what I mean in just a couple slides here. Uh, this term spontaneity. And spontaneity talks about these spontaneous changes that occur only in the direction that leads to equilibrium. So spontaneity has nothing to do with the rate of the reaction, how quickly it reaches equilibrium. That's kinetics, right? We had a whole chapter on kinetics. You could have a slow spontaneous reaction or a fast spontaneous reaction. All spontaneity tells you is the direction in which the reaction will proceed naturally and unaided. So if you picture a roller coaster, and you have the cart for the roller coaster is halfway down a big hill. Uh, the direction that it would naturally go all on its own is to continue to go down the hill, right? It's not going to suddenly climb back up the hill if it's already in motion headed down. So that would be the spontaneous direction that it would head all on its own without any outside help. If you have a product-favored reaction, they're going to be spontaneous. If you have a big K value, you put a couple reactants together, it's going to head in that forward direction all on its own without any outside intervention from you. Uh, Reactant-favored reactions can be spontaneous as well. It's just until equilibrium has been achieved. Once that equilibrium has been achieved, um, then it's no longer going to be that spontaneous in the reactant favored direction. Just a quick tip, how I said uh, you'll see what I mean in a couple slides of that term spontaneous, spontaneity. You might hear the word spontaneous or the term thermodynamically favorable. They mean the exact same thing. Uh, I put a funny little meme up there in the corner. The college board is moving over to the term thermodynamically favorable rather than spontaneous. Spontaneous makes it sound like the reaction happens instantaneously. But as we said on the previous slide, you could have a slow spontaneous reaction or a fast one. So it, since it sounds like it happens right away, they said we need to come up with a new term for it. So it still means the same thing, that the reaction happens unaided in the direction that it would just go on its own without any outside interventions. Uh, 
but you just won't see that term on newer AP problems. So why does this matter to you? If you are searching the internet, looking up older AP practice problems, they used to use the term spontaneous. If you're looking up newer ones from the last couple years, they use the term thermodynamically favorable. As long as you know that they mean the same thing, you're all set.